Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the go-to podcast for small business owners and entrepreneurs who want to grow and scale their businesses and achieve success without social media. Social media can result in comparison, doubt, and imposter syndrome that will ultimately hold you back from achieving your goals and dreams and the purpose God has called you to. And you don't need it to achieve sustainable success. There are myriad marketing strategies you can adopt to reach your soulmate clients and create opportunities for limitless earning potential. Hey friend, I'm Robin Graham, a former pharmacist turned business growth strategist and coach specializing in growing successful businesses without social media. I love to share everything I've learned in my 23 plus years of experience as a business owner. I'm also the author of You, Me, and Anxiety, If you want to follow your God-led calling and uncover joy, purpose, and passion in your life and business while having an impact, making money, and bringing glory to God in the process, you're in the right place. I'm creative, strategic, and techie all rolled into one. If you can't figure out what's holding you back in your business, chances are we'll help figure it out for you. Each week, I and my guests will teach you how to grow your business without social media, in addition to various strategies that you can employ to do so, like marketing, faith, SEO, personal branding, PR, email marketing, sales, tech, tools, systems and processes, and automation, the behind the scenes stuff you need to simplify in order to grow and scale and retain clients. And we'll also cover mindset and mental health too. Listen each week to get the best advice to help you create the life and business of your dreams while staying aligned with your values and faith in Jesus so that you can build a solid foundation, fulfill your purpose, and help create a ripple effect of good in the world. If you're tired of overthinking, spinning in circles, and doing all the things with minimal results, great, because I am all about simplicity, ease, and grace. Be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. And visit the website, therobingram.com, where you'll find a plethora of free resources and all the show notes. Now grab your cup of coffee or the dog's leash, and let's dive in. Hey, friends. Welcome back to another Friday Faith Foundations episode. Today, we're going to talk about strategies to navigate mental health and entrepreneurship. And this is part of the May Mental Health Awareness Series that we are doing. The reality is mental health challenges affect everyone in different ways, but there's no doubt that everyone is affected in one way or another, either themselves, a family member, a friend, or someone they're caring for. No one is untouched by mental health challenges. It's sad, but it's true. Often, despite never even having had mental health challenges like anxiety or depression, entrepreneurs and business owners will experience it. Or it being an entrepreneur or a business owner may exacerbate symptoms of previously diagnosed anxiety or depression. In addition, the loneliness that can be felt during the entrepreneurial journey or a solo business owner working alone most of the time can also lead to anxiety and depression. So it is very important to know strategies that you can employ to navigate mental health challenges. And you may not even feel these these mental health challenges severely or dramatically. But if they aren't addressed, if you don't employ strategies early on, they can worsen and become debilitating. So we don't want that to happen. And I assure you that even if you feel shame around having a mental health challenge, it's time to just shed it. Put that shame at the feet of Jesus because there is no reason to feel shame. You may feel different, you may feel unique, you may struggle in social situations or even your ability to focus, but the reality is mental health is no different than physical health. We don't judge people who have cancer or diabetes or cardiovascular disease or other physical ailments, autoimmune diseases. So let's break the stigma 
around mental health challenges. In other words, I want to assure you that you're not alone, friend. You're not alone. Through the Holy Spirit, you can gain strength. You might feel weak. You might feel really vulnerable, but you're not. You're actually strong. You are refreshed, renewed, and redeemed. The Holy Spirit's supernatural power is available because he resides in you as a believer. You are powerful and you can navigate life and mental health challenges, whether for yourself or as a caregiver. The Holy Spirit is in your life and is an energy source. When life feels impossible, you can tap into the strength that he provides. You never lack anything that you need because he is there for you. And I know, I know, I know it doesn't make it easier, but when you have that strength, when you have that ability to tap into a resource that is supernatural, right? It's, it's not from your peers. It's not from those around you. It's not something you can just pick up. It's something that is so deep inside you that you can tap into. And we're reminded of that in Philippians 4.13. That verse assures us that we can do all things through him who strengthens us. Now, that isn't to say it's going to be easy. Navigating mental health challenges is hard. It takes discipline. It takes consistency. It takes hard work. It requires you to do hard things. But this message of today's episode is meant to give you hope. When you trust the Holy Spirit and rely on him to give you your needs each and every day, be it strength, hope, patience, whatever those gifts are that you need, they're available to you. And hope will help you persevere and put one foot before the other as you navigate your days and any challenges that come up during them. So once you know the strategies to navigating mental health challenges, especially as an entrepreneur, you have to do the work. Whatever those strategies are going to be for you, they could be going to therapy, being compliant with medication, eating healthy, exercising, journaling, tapping into creativity, movement, and studying scripture. Sitting on the couch and watching TV will not do it. It won't help you. You have to actually take action. The first most beneficial strategy is reading scripture and looking into and discovering what the Lord says about your identity, your identity in him and how he will support you as you go through different periods of your life and as you navigate your mental health journey. It's complicated and it's not one and done treatment, but don't feel discouraged because when you stick with it, you have the ability to navigate it. Now I could say conquer it, but the reality is if you have a clinical diagnosis of anxiety, be it social anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder, um, phobias, any of those things, they don't just go away overnight and they can arise whenever they're triggered. So keep in mind that this is lifelong work and it will get easier over time. And I can tell you that the thing that has helped me most is reading scripture and learning how incredibly much I am loved and that I am saved and I am redeemed and that I have the Holy Spirit as my 
armor per se against any of these distractions of mental health challenges. Gratitude has also helped me tremendously. I read something the other day and I think it was in, um, I'm gonna forget his name now, Stephen. He's the pastor at Evolution Church and I'm reading his book. Um, his name is on the tip of my tongue and I can't remember what it is, but I'll think of it and I can even put it in the show notes. But he suggested that when you're feeling anxious or angry or upset, um, you can kind of trace your fingers. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can actually see this, but you can trace your fingers. And with each move up and down the fingers, you can say something you're grateful for. And it ends up being about eight times because you have two sides of each finger, excluding the thumb, of course, that would make it up to 10. But if you do that and think of eight things you're grateful for, your anxiety, your depression will decrease. Maybe it'll temporarily go away. But gratitude can be so incredibly powerful because you start to see the positive. You start to see your blessings. You start to see all the good versus allowing your brain to sit in that place of focusing on something negative. So try that. And I mentioned briefly before other strategies. And of course, going to therapy is very individual specific. Medication is very individual specific because you may or may not need one or the other, but chances are you may need both for a minimum of six months just to get over the hump. And oftentimes, Therapy won't work until the chemicals in your brain are evened out, so to speak. And so sometimes medication is required before therapy will even work. This is very independent on you, your body, your brain, and your mind, and all of your past experiences. So if you need both, give yourself the grace to use both. And don't judge yourself. Get curious about how they can help you. And the same goes for exercise, changing your diet, eating healthier. We have plenty of episodes on health and nutrition, so you could tap into any of those as resources, but doing so will help fuel your body with what it needs. Sometimes when our minerals and our, our um, vitamins and hormones and things like that are off in our body, it can create like a chemical reaction that is negative. So it's important to know like what, what are you consuming? Are you consuming a lot of chemicals or preservatives, things like that, dyes, those can all trigger your mental health. So make sure that you're eating whole foods, healthy foods, and you're moving your body. You don't have to do strenuous exercise, but move your body, get creative. And when we talk about creativity, it could be anything from coloring, drawing, singing, writing. It could be gardening, but move your body and get creative. And when you do both of those things, you'll start to open more positive neural pathways in your brain and you will enjoy them. And as you begin to enjoy, you're also going to feel happy happier anyway, because happiness comes from within. There's not a person on this planet that can make you happy. You have to be happy from inside. And that is where the Holy Spirit comes into play to give you that strength to fight against these foes of mental health challenges and really dig in and, and grasp on to that supernatural power to begin your healing journey, to calm those negative thoughts and those, those neural pathways that are firing negatively versus positively. And this is where you know, we like to talk about um, neuroplasticity. You have the power to change those neural pathways in your brain. And you Greg created the brain so miraculously. And, and some of you who have been listening for a while have heard me say this, but those negative pathways, the, those neural pathways where negative thoughts have been, they, they grow these like ugly little branches. And so when you start to think more positive and experience more joy, and do these things that generate more positivity, like gratitude, prayer, 
um, focusing on those scripture verses, meditating on scripture verses that give you peace and comfort and strength, exercising, eating right, all of those things will help change those neural pathways so that you can feel better and have more sustainable ability to feel better. Okay, so I want to leave you with a concept that I think has been remarkably helpful for me, and that is so simple, but it's to take scripture verses, Bible verses, and write them on note cards and just place them around your house, in your car, in your handbag, wherever you're going to be, you have them ready, readily available so that you can look at them, read them, meditate on them, and Bring yourself back to that sense of strength and peace. So Romans 8, 11, I read before, but it is one that you can really rely on. And I'm going to go back and read it again, just in case. But Paul tells us in Romans 8, 11, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. And what that is referring to is that the Holy Spirit is in us to rejuvenate us and give us that strength to fight mental health challenges or physical abnormalities as well. But we're speaking specifically to mental health right now. He becomes your support system. So another one that is fabulous to hold on to as well is Romans 5, 3 to 5, and it reads, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And then, of course, another favorite that I know we've had on the show before, probably many times, is Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, there's that gratitude, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This verse reminds us the power of gratitude. And that gratitude is important, not only for us, for God. He wants to know that we see his blessings and we appreciate them. So ask the Holy Spirit to intercede for you. When you don't know what to pray, he does. And you can ask him. But first, give thanks. All right. I am going to close out by sharing a prayer with you that you've probably heard me pray on the show before, but it's one that I use so often and it helps. It works and it's just amazing when you can learn to grasp on to something like prayer or scripture to calm your anxieties, calm depression, or just to give you strength to push through as you navigate it. And that is, thank you, Lord, for your grace, your supernatural power of healing and strength. Please calm my heart and quiet my mind, that I may hear you and live according to your will, to heal my mind, my body, and to bring glory to you while serving others. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope this blesses you, friends. If you know anyone else who has mental health challenges or is trying to take care of someone who does have mental health challenges, share this episode with them. It may be just what they need to hear to squash shame, to silence fear, doubt, imposter syndrome, or any other negative mindset that they're experiencing. And who knows? Maybe it'll just bring someone to faith. How remarkable would that be? All right. Thanks for being here. And I will see you all next time. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time, so I truly appreciate you joining me. If you enjoyed this episode and found the information helpful, please take a moment to subscribe and leave a rating and review. 
Ratings and reviews are how we grow and get amazing guests and how more people find the show. A kind review would mean the world to me. Oh, and don't forget to share the episode with someone that it will help. And let's connect. You can find me on Pinterest and LinkedIn as therobingram.com. And be sure and visit the website, therobingram.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success. Until next time, remember to smile.